Hello and welcome to the Point to Rise show. This is your host, Suzanne Prochelle, former international ballerina that found her passion in mindset, business, and technology, and is today the founder of Rise Media. It is my purpose to use all the experiences of my past to create a better, financially sustainable future for the performing arts industry. And that starts with every single one of us. I believe that being you is your superpower. And I am here to guide you, empower you, inspire you, and give you all the resources you need to rise above what you think you're capable of. Every week, I'll bring you free shows featuring guests, collaboration, and many episodes to ensure that you have the support in your journey as a performer. I want you to know that you are not alone. Stop chasing and start creating. Your success starts now here with you. So let's go. Hello and welcome back to the show. Thank you for tuning in. Before I get started, I wanted to remind you to sign up for the RISE daily newsletter. It is a newsletter combining technology, performing arts, and business, any kind of information that are out there. So you're in the known, you don't have to look into any kind of publications, but you have what is important delivered to you so you can get informed in seven minutes or less. And we're also creating a directory for everybody that is in any way involved or is passionate about the performing arts, um, is serving the performing arts, or just simply loves the performing arts and can put their business or their offering or their services into the directory. So if that's you, go to the risemedia.group website and click sign up for the newsletter. It is completely free. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so now let me dive into what are your fears and what are they keeping you from doing? What is it costing you daily when you decide to lean into your fear versus analyzing it and rewriting it? And I want to use an example of mine. I've never shared this before. So here we go. In 2002, I returned after a visit in Europe to back to the US and I was on a O1 visa at that time and my visa had expired and I didn't know. So upon entry in Washington DC, I got detained by the INS back then. They put me in one of these rooms with um, inspectors that interrogated us. It was an eight hour long conversation. And when I say conversation, it was more an interrogation. Gun points, we weren't allowed to eat, we weren't allowed to go to the bathroom, no water. You get what I'm what I'm saying here, right? It was a traumatic event. And I was sent back to Germany at that point after eight hours of talking and, and figuring things out and finding a solution, they escorted me, two officers, not embarrassing at all, through the DC airport back to a plane, the ticket I had to purchase, by the way. And I was also met in Germany by officers, escorted off the plane. Every flight attendant on the plane knew what happened to me and they had to watch me. So it was a predicament I never thought I would put myself into and it created this deep fear around flying because my subconscious really related flying with the deep fear of survival that I felt during those eight hours and I, I never experienced flying as the same so for me now flying anywhere is definitely putting my life at risk. That's what it feels like. So every time before I get on a plane, I have high anxiety, my palms start sweating, I have this immense pressure on my chest, my heart's about to just jump out, my entire body clamps up. By the way, I'm recording this right after a flight from yesterday, and I can attest that I am still there. My body is so tight from all the adrenaline that had been put out and all the, the energetic work I chose to do not to 
feel into my fear because if I'd done that, I would not be in Los Angeles right now. And mind you, even just before we we rolled onto the runway, I had this fleeting thought of, <laughs> why don't I just stand up and scream on the top of my lungs, let me out. And my consciousness took over right away and said, and then what? And then what, Susie? What are you going to do? You're not going to get where you want to go. You're not going to have the reward of feeling proud of yourself that yet again, you overcame that fear. And yet again, I would have not experienced or be able to experience my favorite city. So <clears throat> the question here is, how often are we actually doing that in, in our actions and our behavior on a daily where we let fear take over because we're actually not aware of certain actions or behaviors that we're doing or not doing, right? So think about, are you afraid of engaging with other people um, because you think they hurt you or they're going to be mean to you because that is a memory your subconscious mind carries? Are you afraid of not applying to the job and therefore not doing it because you are afraid of hearing the no because you look at or feel the no so deeply in your body and it is actually feeling to you as a rejection of yourself, as of who you are. It makes you feel you're not lovable. It makes you feel you're not enough. If we're not aware of the cause and the reaction, then we keep letting fear steer our life. And I, I have to say, particularly in the performing arts, you know, there is so much fear going around in terms of it not being enough, you're not being enough, not doing enough, that we all perhaps at one point or another, and I am just as guilty as we all are, that we're not taking risks, that we're not doing new things in order to evolve. Now, we need that fear to show us where we have opportunities. And that's why I'm saying lean into your fears. Learn what your fears are. What is it actually that you're afraid of? Because that first sense of fear that we're feeling is, is just the warning signal. So we're not doing it, whatever that it is. So we're, we're, we're staying safe. We're not getting our body at risk or our entire being at risk. So I challenge you to start writing it down. Every time there's a fear coming in, the, the thought of, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. No, but what if I get this instead of this? And, and really dig deeper to understand, why is this happening? Why am I still, or why am I feeling this way? And is it actually true? Is what I think the outcome will be, is that actually the truth or is that just my system giving me warning signs so I retrieve? I would love to hear from you what your fears are, what your deepest fears are, and how you are in the future choosing to succumb them and not not actually not to succumb them but to really dig deeper into what they're standing for what kind of a signal is it giving you and how can you overcome that because at the end of the day guys we're only living once if we were to give into all the fears that we're having like we're never gonna get to where we really want to go this is our only life and it is too short to let fear drive our bus. So let me know. I am curious and I want to hear your stories. Tag me on Instagram after this episode comes out, um, on TikTok, on LinkedIn, wherever you are active on social media. I am sending you so much love. Have the best day. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. If this message resonates with you, please pass it on to someone who needs to hear this right now. And if you like what you've heard, your feedback will go a very long way. If you just take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review, 
that would mean the world to me. Till next time, point at yourself to rise to all that you are capable of.